Welcome to another episode of the Pilot Talk podcast by OSM Aviation with uh, Captain Michelle Treskin and myself, Stein Mjotveit. We're two commercial pilots and flight instructors with a shared passion for aviation and the aviation industry. And this podcast is made with the ambition to inspire, educate, and entertain you, our beloved listeners who either share our passion for flying or simply want to get a peek behind the cockpit door. In this podcast, we're going to discuss flying, flight training, career advice for pilots, and other interesting topics from the exciting world of aviation. In today's episode, we have a really special guest, Teresa Osvaldsson, is the correct pronunciation in Swedish. Say that again. Teresa Osvaldsson. Okay. Uh, we'll just go by Therese from Therese, now on. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. the international version. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to butcher her last name like you oh, do mine. God. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Um, and uh, tell us a little bit more about Therese and what we're going to talk about today, Michelle. Well, I think that uh, Therese is a very special lady. Uh, she's been flying since uh, 2003. Uh, she is now a captain on a uh, nice, beautiful, shiny uh, executive jet called the uh, Cessna Citation 560 XL, I think it is. Um, uh, so she's flying VIP around the world, or mostly in Europe, I guess. And... Um, Um, she has an interesting career path, uh, which is extremely inspiring. Uh, I can't think the listeners are going to love it. Yeah, yeah. She's uh, made some uh, some interesting choices, uh, yeah. taken lots of initiative throughout her career. Huge. And branched uh, outside the cockpit into safety management work, compliance. And uh, I agree with you. I think the listeners are really going to enjoy this episode. Uh, shows that you can broaden Exactly. your horizon and branch out uh, into different areas as well. Right. And uh, combining that with flying so it can be a really interesting job. Yeah, especially in the uh, in this kind of world. Exactly. So stay tuned, guys. Today's episode is going to be great. You are listening to Pilot Talk by OSM Aviation. <laughs> Okay, Michelle, we have the privilege of having another guest on the show today. Another pilot? Yes. Extraordinaire. Indeed. And uh, a female pilot. Yes. Yay. Uh, she also used to work at uh, the flight school as a flight instructor. Oh, right, right. Yeah. So we, Incredible. Uh, we uh, have a colleague here, our head of training, Marcus, um, put us in touch and, and we started talking and... Well, I'll leave it to you, uh, Therese. Uh, thank you, first of all, for being here yeah, on the show. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's very nice to be here. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. It is and, exciting. And we, we are looking forward to hearing more about your journey. Uh, I think that's a good place to start, actually. So if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about you know how you got into aviation and, and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I started flying here at the school in uh, 2003. Uh, and at that time here in Sweden, we could apply for a high school with the combined flight training. Uh, so I did that for uh, two years and graduated in 2005 with a CPL uh, single engine uh, license. Were you the, um, sorry, were you the only uh, female uh, that applied? Uh, no, we were six uh, female okay. students six, okay. at the time. 2003, all right. Yeah. That's good. Nice. Good yeah, it was a pretty high percentage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we were 30 students in total in my class. All right. Uh, so, yeah, a couple. Uh, I wouldn't be able to tell you the percentage, but no. that's good. <laughs> let's, let's not go into that. <laughs> that was too deep. Yeah. So, but after that, I applied for uh, something called the VP class, where I got my multi-engine uh, MCC and uh, ATPL theory. Uh, so after that, I could start applying for jobs, and that was in 2007. And at that time, there wasn't that much jobs available. <laughs> so right, right. yeah, I started as an instructor here. At, uh, and it has nothing to do with the gender as, as well. You, there was no jobs at all, period. No, right. no, exactly. Yeah, okay. it was, uh, no, there were no jobs available. Right. Uh, some uh, students I know went to Ryanair and a couple of students uh, were lucky and could go into regional right. uh, traffic. But um, yeah, most of us just try to keep flying some somehow. Yeah, mm. uh, yeah so I uh, got the opportunity to become an instructor here at the school. Um, 
And uh, at that time, the school had a site in Arvidsjar, up in the northern part of Sweden. So I went there and were there for about a year, uh, teaching CPL. Did you like it up north? Uh, yeah, I liked it, but it was, uh, it was, it was it, yeah, it was hard to get into like the society. And of course, there were other instructors there and we had a good time. And I, I know that the students that I've spoken to who have been there are, are really happy about it and they, they really liked it. And uh, the school was good, but yeah, I, I wanted to, to do something else. Okay. <laughs> so I, I continued to apply for jobs. And uh, I was uh, lucky to get a job at NextJet, which uh, was a regional carrier here in uh, Sweden. But unfortunately, they, they went bankrupt about two years ago, I think it was. What were you flying there? Uh, what? W- which aircraft were you flying? Yeah, the, the British Aerospace ATP, oh, turboprop, yeah, okay. yeah. uh, 68 passengers. Yeah, the big one. Yeah, the big one, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Nice airplane. Well, yeah, yeah, it was a nice airplane. It had a bad reputation, though. <laughs> Everyone yeah, yeah. thought it only broke all the time, but well, it's yeah. Br- British made. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. It's like the cars. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, but I, I liked it. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, I started there as a first officer, um, and after about two years, I started feeling like I want to do something more, than just flying. Mm-hmm. Um, so I uh, started speaking to the uh, flight ops manager and the training manager to see if they needed help with anything. Uh, so I had the opportunity to do some uh, administrative work. Yeah. Um, and after a while, uh, next it wanted to become an IATA member and do the IOSA audit. Right. Um, so uh, myself and uh, two uh, of my colleagues went to the management and said that, well, we can, uh, we can do this. <laughs> so we were quite uh, bold and said that All right. we, can, uh, we can help you with this, nice. with this audit and do uh, re- revise the manuals and uh, make it up big to date. So that, yeah, it was a really big job. Big job. <laughs> If I had known from the start, yeah, no maybe, I, maybe I wouldn't have been that bold, but we were. That's good. So, yeah. But that's the time where you were not flying. So, yeah, yeah, I was flying. Also. Are you still flying? Yeah, at the same I was time? still flying. Yeah. Wow. So were you still flying 100% or did you start flying a little bit less to work with these things? Or? Um, yeah, we had some time off to do, uh, to do this also. So I don't remember exactly the percentage, but. Yeah, yeah, but we were uh, hired as 100% pilots. Line pilots, yeah. yeah. Line pilots, yeah. exactly. Um, yeah, but so then we, we started working with that. And uh, from there on, it's just kept going. So uh, I did the mostly of the safety part of the audit, the SMS part of the audit. Yeah. And the other two uh, went into training and flight ops. And uh, yeah, we stayed there. I'm still in uh, compliance and safety and uh, the other two are still in training and flight ops. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Nice. So, Interesting yeah. career path. Uh, yeah. You know, that, uh, it's rare that we see uh, that kind of drive, uh, if I may say so, you know, at, at the early stage of your pilot career, mm. a lot of pilots just want to go crazy and just fly, 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 fly. And uh, you did your, a little bit of instructing and then you did a bit of a, a commercial passenger flying and all that. And suddenly you're into the, the really nitty gritty yeah. of compliance and all that and manuals. I mean, that's a lot mm. of work. And it's, uh, I think for many of our listeners are pilots and are in aviation, they'll understand what SMS stands for. But for the non-pilots, it stands for a safety management system. Exactly. So... This is what you started getting into working with the safety matters and and everything that lies behind having the safe, uh, efficient uh, airline operation, basically, right? Exactly. It's uh, uh, well, the the term safety management system started coming into play, I think, around 2010, 2011. And uh, at the same time, about we also here in Europe, we uh, uh, started using the uh, IASA uh, regulation, uh, and there they really like pinpointed what, what 
uh, what part of a management system needs to be in place uh, to have a systematic way of working with safety and compliance mm. right. to make sure that that we stay ahead yeah. and uh, yeah. think about hazard identification well, what type of hazards are we exposed to and how can we um, mitigate them yeah, yeah. minimize it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, when I was in Canada as well, I was uh, with the Transport Canada. We were, I was part of the uh, system safety mm. or s- safety systems, actually, because it is a system, uh, a yeah. system that we're integrating. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. And uh, how long did you do that for? Are you still doing it? Yeah, I'm still doing it. <laughs> exactly. So, but now I've changed uh, my focus a little bit because mm-hmm. uh, at Nextit, I was the safety manager. So I was the focal point for the... Uh, safety management system. Uh, now we're getting into a lot of different uh, aviation terms here, but the uh, uh, at an airline, you need uh, some specific persons nominated or uh, to even have your air operator's certificate. Right. So one of them is that you need to have a safety manager, but the one that is ultimately responsible for the safety within the airline is the accountable manager. So as a safety manager, I was directly, uh, I reported directly to the accountable manager to keep uh, him informed about the safety within the the company. Mm-hmm. And uh, now I work as a compliance monitoring manager, which is kind of like the other part of the management system. Mm. That's about keeping up with regulations, making sure that we are compliant with regulations and our own procedures that we have set up if yeah, they right. supersede the regulations, so to speak. And you're still flying. And I'm still flying. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> As a captain on the Cessna Citation XLS. Wow. Incredible. It sounds like a busy, busy uh, job. Many responsibilities and things to, to keep track of. Uh, have you, uh, you know, this journey for you, did you, uh, looking back at the choices you made now, uh, how do you feel about the paths that you took? Yeah, well, as you said, Michelle, uh, I quite early started to realize that only flying was not what I wanted to do. Because, uh, yeah, as I said, I, I applied for the high school uh, combined with the flight training. And that was mostly because... It was in my hometown, Westeros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never dreamed about <laughs> becoming a pilot. Uh, I'm not still not that interested, actually, in airplanes. <laughs> 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 but so I realized uh, after a few years that yeah, okay, I like flying and I like the job, but I think I'm more interested about the system. How does an airline work? And uh, yeah, yeah. What 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 are the different responsibilities and how can we work more with the human aspects and yeah with the management system part Mm. of the airline well i think that you're a very special person (laughs) because um, someone that the the career path you took and the admission of you know i'm i'm really not that interested in flying but i am a pilot but i'm still more interested into the nitty-gritty you know the gear, the gears of the machine, and all that. It's uh, it 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 takes a special person, I think, and I admire that. I totally admire that. That's great. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> wow, it's it's yeah. uh yeah, it's a, you have an impressive uh, resume, uh, Therese. Is um, it, apart from just satisfying your interest for doing something different, you know, getting into the systematics and what makes an airline run safely and efficiently. Has there been any any other benefits of broadening your experience in the way that you've had? Or, uh, yeah, I, I, absolutely. Uh, uh, of course, I've been able to uh, maybe plan my schedule a little bit more mm-hmm. than if I was only a line pilot, because uh, since I've had all these different responsibilities, I have also had to be able to tell schedule that. These days I need to be in the office or these days I have travel for something else. And, right. 
And you're, I, a mo you're a mother as well. Yeah, I'm a mother as well. <laughs> exactly. And she looks like to. 16, folks. <laughs> so again, that, that adds, up, adds up as well. Yeah, absolutely. You're, so we, you're such I'm, a charmer. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you see me on video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have two kids. They are four and six years old. So, oh, uh, wow. of course, that, that has uh, been uh, some... Uh, yeah, some challenges absolutely because my my husband is a pilot as well <laughs> yeah yeah um, yeah so but he's a pilot like you though he um, he doesn't he's not a full-time pilot he's a, he's actually another he, he has a second function exactly right he's a yeah. com in compliance as well isn't he uh, at the moment he works for the swedish authority right yeah the so aviation Institute. So yeah exactly right. uh, the transport Styrelsen. yeah and uh, but well, so when we expected our first uh, child, we kind of realized that we can both be flying uh, full time. Full time. Yeah. So uh, and uh, an opportunity came up for him to go to the Swedish Aviation Authority. So he's been there uh, since then, working more uh, office hours. Yeah. But of course, he has travels as well, and he has some flight duty also. So sure. we we have to uh, almost every week we do a, a planning like what's up next week, who's traveling <laughs> when, and who oh, is uh, who's picking up the kids from kindergarten, and uh -huh. uh, do we need to call our parents to see if they can pick them up or yeah. Wow. <laughs> so it's it's a, a struggle. Shuffle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, That's incredible. Sounds like there's quite a bit of logistics to make that puzzle. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, but yeah it's it's working good for us uh, since, since we are able to plan our time a little bit more than if we were 100% line pilots. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, we, we have friends that are uh, line pilots, both work 100% and... Uh, yeah, they, they manage somehow with help from uh, grandparents and, yeah, yeah. and and other persons, but yeah. There's always a way. Th there is basically. a way. Yeah, There's there is a way. A, if yeah. you if you want it, of course, there is a way. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you should, you should know that there is some logistical struggles. <laughs> I, I think this is uh, really, really interesting, uh, Therese. It's, uh, we spoke about this at lunch. It's one of the questions I get most frequently that I feel less qualified to answer because at this point I don't have any kids, so my logistics are quite a bit easier. And uh, it's it's very interesting to hear your perspective. I'm sure there's a lot of listeners that yes. you know uh, it'd be helpful for them to understand. Yeah, there were some challenges to make this go through. We had to make some choices and structure mm -hmm. our life in a way to make it work, but it can be done. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, if you're a, if you're a female line pilot, uh, it doesn't mean that you have you can't have any family. Uh, no. it shows that there is a way, and uh, mm. you're not you're not limited. Yeah, there's uh, there's so many possibilities, and you got to make it work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. Uh, and I mean, this this problem is um, is there for all pilots, not right, just exactly. uh, uh, of course not just for the female pilots, no. even if it's we still uh, have a way to go maybe where um, fathers take on the same amount of responsibility as a mother do but at least here in sweden or in scandinavia i think we are moving forward at quite a fast pace yeah so, yeah i think there's not a problem yeah. here in the scandinavian countries of a mm. sort of 50 50 split between the the parents uh, i think it's no. getting better in other countries as well like yeah. in Canada, I think the uh, and the United States, I think people are just starting to wake up and yeah. you know and saying, well, mm. if we're going to make it work, that's the way it's going to be. Yeah. You know, yeah, you'll have to contribute, or you yeah. know, yeah, exactly. I'm going to find myself I another mean, husband. The, the, the only <laughs> the, the only the only difference really between a male and a female pilot, of course, is the pregnancy part. Right. Right. Yeah. But, well, but we yeah. do most of the work, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm speaking for myself here. <laughs> I, I, I won't Please. even comment on that. No, no, no. no please don't do. Pilot Talk with Stein Mjotvit and Michelle Treskin. So what, so what, does, the, what does the future look like for you? What, what do you see yourself in 10 years from now? 
Oh, good question. Um, well, I'm quite happy where I am at the moment since it, it, it makes my life work yeah, very well. Yeah, it's working well. for you, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So we have one week on and one week off yeah. and we don't fly that many hours a year. So I have uh, very much uh, room for moving things around if I if I have to be home right. on a specific day. You're flexible can, there. Yeah. yeah we can solve that problem. Right. Mm. Um, so at the moment I'm happy, but uh, I mean, aviation industry is as it is. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And especially in the VIP sector or busy sector where I am at the moment, uh, it's based on that someone wants to spend a tremendous amount of money on flying. <laughs> Yeah. So you never know. Fly, flying privately, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you see? Um, do you see the? Uh, what do you see as a future for VIP flying? Do you see uh, electric planes coming around the corner? Do you see? Uh, do you see any big big changes? That, because you're in that you're in that business sort of uh, sector. Yeah. Uh, what What do you see coming? Well, uh, I'm not sure. Probably the electrical part will be very interesting. Uh, but what we have seen uh, during the last couple of years is that it's more private persons that spend the money. It's not right. the it's not the big companies anymore right, that right. that spend this. So it's time more money. individual. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it's probably uh, very much up to what they want. Right. Uh, to have yeah, and yeah. their their demands more than right. more than what the industry uh, dictates. Yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah, when you get the money, you yeah. have the power, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's a it's an interesting segment, and I think we we kind of we skipped over that part because we, last we were talking about NextJet, and then we spoke that they went bankrupt. But you you actually left NextJet to go into the VIP sector. About a year before? Yeah, the, exactly. Yeah, is, is that when you made the transition from working with safety to compliance as well? Exactly. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, because I was a safety manager at NextJet almost up until I quit. Okay. Did you uh, see it coming? No. The bankruptcy? Yeah. yeah well, it, it, it had been a struggle for a couple of years. Right. So, yeah, of course... It wasn't totally out of the blue, maybe, but yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was a good company. I I really I really liked my time there, and I mean one of the good parts about aviation, maybe also bad in a way, but one of the good parts is that you can really work yourself up. Right. Like in my case, I started at the floor, so to speak, like the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. First officer, line pilot. Yeah. Um. And then after a couple of years, I I ended up being captain, safety manager, involved in uh, all, all all parts of the management. Um, it was yeah, it was really great, uh -huh. and uh, I was able to have a lot of experience and work with a lot of really interesting and uh, driven people. Yeah, and yeah. That was the good part about Next. That there, were, there was a lot of people who really wanted to do something great. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting because we've had um, here at OSM Aviation Academy, we've had a few airlines come in and use our facilities and our simulators to recruit pilots. And right after NextJet went bankrupt, quite a few NextJet pilots came through the doors, not to interview with us, but to interview with our partner airlines at the school. All right, and uh, you know. It's, Speaking to the recruiters of these airlines, they told me uh, there's a lot of really great pilots coming through. And NextJet, uh, we have a fantastic impression of that company. It feels like every pilot that comes through here, and they took quite a few in on interviews, like you're describing, is a really tight-knit team, um, really good people. Um, so it's, it's interesting uh, to hear that that reputation of, of the team that you're working in is spread well beyond just the company itself. Yeah, that's that's really nice to hear. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like the company, so it was, it was too bad that the financial part didn't really yeah. work. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah. 
it's a it's a hard business that way in aviation. It's yeah, costs a lot of money and uh, not oh, yeah. that much money coming in. <laughs> no, no. But it's good to hear also as well that because you're um, a female gender that uh, it didn't it didn't stop you in, in a man's world. It didn't stop you from moving up and progressing and and achieving everything that you wanted. It, it's great to hear that uh, you know it's you did exactly the way you saw it and and you achieved that and you're driven and yeah. not, nothing stopped you. It's great. Oh. Great to hear. I, I yeah, think. it's uh, yeah, it's been it's been working well for me. Of course, I've had some uh, some drawbacks as well, and uh, I have experienced also, of course, like being a female in a man's world that there are some. Uh, but it's not a man's world. I use that term, but yeah, I, would, I'm, I should correct myself. Uh, a lot of people think it's a man's world, but it's not. No, it's, it absolutely no, it's, is not. Uh, no, it's strictly no. statistically there that's has right. been more men yeah, than women right. in aviation. I yeah. think the number is rising, but mm-hmm. I think we're onto something really interesting here because I'm curious to know what what has been the challenges that you've experienced on your journey. Yeah, mostly, it's been out flying on the line that you can experience that some ground personnel and and other people like they they take for granted that the 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 male pilot is the captain mm. yeah yeah <laughs> or, it's a misconception. or some or sometimes even that I'm in a cabin crew right or, yeah so yeah. of course I've I've experienced that part as well um, but yeah just haven't let that stop me yeah, no. <laughs> and uh, and as i said in the beginning i maybe i've been a bit bold and just said that i i can do this yeah. and uh, you i think i'm as good as you yeah. are that's yeah. right mm-hmm. yeah that's uh yeah that's good i think it, it just uh, aviation in general is kind of a bold industry isn't it it is we're not supposed to be flying no. What are we doing up there? <laughs> well, we want to go fly across the world. It's crazy when you think about it. Yeah, it's true. How far we've come. No? Yeah, yeah. It's um, funny you say that, the uh, the conception of... Uh, I was flying as a passenger, and I remember we had uh, the crew in, in the front were actually two females. Mm. And and I could hear the whispering when they, the people, you know, the, when the crew came in, uh, when the people were waiting to board the aircraft, uh, the crew came in and you saw that the two... The two pilots were actually females, mm. and people were starting to talk. Yeah. Look, look, they got two females, and a lot of people now, uh, you know, it's it's not like they were shocked; they actually were happy to see it. Yeah, which is good. Right. You know, yeah. people right. are changing. Yeah, uh, so yeah. it's no longer a man's world. Yeah. yeah, no, you. I also have received a lot of uh, praising, praising yeah. like, yeah, it's so good to see a female Absolutely. captain. I feel I feel safer now. <laughs> 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 which is weird. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, it's yeah. I've I've heard that from some other female colleagues as well and, and often like you're describing it's people from outside of the flight deck. So, mm. you know, ground personnel or even passengers. Yeah. Uh and maybe a little bit more the older generation that is surprised to see a female in the cockpit, but like you're saying Michelle, it's it's you know, it's not it's not at all odd and it's really really good yeah. to have that mix of of men and women because we tend to work really well together uh, yeah. and balance yeah. each other out uh, yeah. you know so i agree yeah. it's very refreshing yeah but uh, very refreshing and, but i mean if like you mentioned uh, with the statistics uh, stein uh, that still there are more men than women and uh, i think if you look also like at management positions and instructor positions uh, it's even worse oh. so i mean yeah 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 it's coming you have to yeah you you have to maybe really want it and show that you want it mm. perhaps still a little bit more as a, as a woman than a man mm. unfortunately because um, the way the the industry works is that yeah you become a first officer you become a captain and then you become a line captain or a training captain or or something like that. And uh, since that's usually based on seniority, um, 
there are still more men than women in those yeah. positions. Yeah. And maybe from an older generation who has a hard time seeing a woman as an instructor or a line check pilot or... Yeah, you don't see that very often. Uh, no. You're totally right. I, 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 don't, I don't have any numbers or any percentage, no, but I don't think that there are that many female examiners or yeah. anything like that, even here in Sweden. Yeah. You'll be the first one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. It's, um, it's, it's, it's tr- you're right. Um, but uh, Stein and I were really working on promoting uh, and inviting all females to, to come in and, and become pilots and, and continue that, pro- that career progression. And mm. It's so important. It's, it's time for the change. Yeah. And I hope that uh, and think as well that this conversation might be a part in contributing to that. That's uh, right. Because I think for, for many of the girls out there that are considering becoming a pilot, it's nice for them to hear about your journey and uh, how you got to where you are today. And doable. Uh, yeah, it's doable. And, and uh, correct me here if I'm wrong, but I also really enjoy hearing about the, you know, you took initiative to branch into the safety work. You, you showed up and you said, hey, I think we can do this. We'd like to help out. Um, so by just having the willingness and being a bit bold, right? Yeah. That can really make a difference. Is that a, a good way of summarizing it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I believe it still works like that. Like you, you need to show that you want to and that you can do it. Yeah. Because, I mean, the, most of the uh, the airlines are still very small. I mean, you have the big operators like here in Sweden, you have SAS and of course, and maybe Norwegian and, and they probably have a lot of people in management and uh, supporting people in management and everything like that. But at the smaller companies, if you get the opportunity to go in there, they don't have that, those resources mm. and they don't have basically the time to go and find someone who right. who wants to do it. So just knock on the door and say that I'm here, I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah. That's, that it's sounds great. like really good advice. Great and, attitude. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I think that also speaks to the fact that working at a smaller company can actually present opportunities and open doors, uh, which will be beneficial, you know, if you choose to go into another role, different company, or even staying within that company. And if you're just rich in initiative and you show up and you ask uh, for things to do and take on more responsibility, uh, there's every opportunity to do so. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, for me, it's been a great journey just starting with NextJet and now with Blue Link. Um, yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed it. Mm. And uh, Good to hear. Yeah. Good to hear. Pilot Talk. Available on iTunes, Spotify, or osmaviation.com slash podcast. Okay, Therese. So you you mentioned that um, taking initiative and showing up and saying, hey, I want to do this, I want to be part of it. That is one of the things that have contributed to your success and to your ability to work with the things that you're working with today. Uh, apart from that, apart from the initiative are there any other uh, skills or assets that you can attribute to to helping you get to where you are? Um, yeah, well, um, when I started to get into the the safety part of the work and started working more with management and manuals, I discovered that I... I think I have a strength in seeing or looking at a system or a, a structure and being able to see where we can make improvements or adjustments and where where do we need to put in some more work to make this uh, what we want it to be. Um, yeah, so so that and, and also that I've, I've always stayed. Uh, with the flying, uh, so I've always had like one foot uh, still, <laughs> still in it, so to speak. <laughs> so, because I think that has been really important. Because 
otherwise you get stuck in your office and you you come up with all these great ideas like yeah if we do this and we do that and uh, and the the pilots can also do this and that and uh, that's that's perfect and we then we can uh, comply with this regulation and, and we just uh, write this procedure and everything will be perfect but but you also need to have an understanding of okay how will this be received by the pilots and right. will they be able to actually do this and uh, at the same time uh, uh, fly the, the airplane in a safe way. Mm. Right, right. Yeah. So it enabled you to be more pragmatic in implementing uh, the changes, regulatory changes, yeah. the compliance uh, yeah, exactly. requirements. And, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, so being able to see the, the bigger picture and uh, have an understanding of what is it like out on the line. That's right. What yeah. are the challenges that the pilots and cabin crew and everyone else meets? Right, right. Yeah. That's right. That's, I, I can see how it's uh, so important to be, I guess, being a pilot and uh, have one foot, you know, one foot in the cockpit and one foot in the office yeah. and be able to do the job that you're doing because you have the understanding of both worlds. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it's been really important, yeah. uh, or or at least if you that you have some sort of connection to the uh, to the operation. Yeah, if you're yeah. a technician or you're a ground uh, handling person, or, or or but you you right. have some sort of connection to mm. what is actually happening. Yeah, yeah. Out in, you wouldn't be able to do your job if you didn't have that. Mm. No, no, absolutely not. Yeah. yeah, that's good to know. Yeah. It is. And I, I think that it's also so cool to hear that, you know, you, you took initiative, showed up and took a chance on doing something new and venturing into an area and then discovering strengths within operating in this system and making improvements. And, and that's got to be a, a really rewarding journey to make as well as a good learning experience. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's... Um yeah, it's been a fast learning curve sometimes. Yeah, no <laughs> <It's>, kidding. Yeah, <laughs> I can't a lot of that. a lot of hours has uh, gone into to work. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, I think we, we've we've spoken quite a bit about your time at NextJet and and your work with safety and compliance and now the, the within the VIP sector. Uh, but one of the things that I think we just brushed over was your time working as an instructor. Yeah, and I know it's quite a few years ago now, but uh, having that as your foundation uh, has what kind of strengths did that give you when you ventured into the other roles that you had? Uh, I think it's been a really good experience for me because I've never had any issues with doing classroom instructions, like with safety, or I also worked as a ground instructor for a while at Nextjet and. Uh, I've always really enjoyed it mm. <laughs> and maybe that comes from the instructing part because mm. yeah I started doing that and yeah it's yeah I, I still enjoy it mm. yeah. I love to talk about this stuff yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but do you think that the um, by becoming an instructor after you got your uh, your qualifications as a pilot yeah did that open doors what did that did that help you open more doors than if you didn't go through as an instructor? Uh, maybe, because, I mean, you, you start out early with uh, being the one that is supposed to know. Right. <laughs> like you, the you are, you, yeah, yeah, you're out there with a student and they uh, expect you to know uh, what's going to happen and uh, what are we going to do. And, uh, yeah, perhaps that was some, some part of the foundation to me being able to just going up to the management and saying that, yeah, I can do this. Mm. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's and, very encouraging. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and I mean, uh, as a captain as well, when I got my upgrade, I already had some experience of being the pilot in command. Mm. Right. Um, and sometimes, I mean, it's even harder to be an instructor because... You want the student, of course, to feel like they are the pilot in command, but you still have the responsibility. Mm. So you have to be able to let them do uh, the flying 
uh, for as long as possible, but then knowing when when is it time for me to, to take, take over. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's an absolutely. art. It yeah. is. It truly it is. is. And it I is. mean, when, when you're a captain, the, the person sitting next to me is really experienced and they are also rated on the type and have several hundred hours of flying and they are, I mean, really skilled professionals. Um, so something really serious should happen for me to be, to have to take control. Take control. Yeah. They, they know what they are doing. Of course, I am the responsible and I have to, uh, yeah, look at the, the bigger picture and see that, okay, what's coming up yeah. and, uh, okay, passengers yeah, to anticipate and anticipate things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, once an instructor, you're always an instructor mm. in, in, in the real sense, because as the, as a captain, you're, you're still looking after the first officer and if he does something drastically wrong well you're there to take control and you're there to correct him and hopefully you'll debrief him and tell him what mm. ways to improve and yeah. that's what the instructor does all the time yeah, yeah exactly and and uh, as i mentioned more like as a captain you are you more in a sense have to constantly keep more uh, information in the in the loop uh, or i think that was the the big change from being a first officer to being a captain. Like, as a first officer, you can basically just come in the aircraft and uh, yeah, you do your thing and you're, yeah. of course, you don't have to uh, think. of course, all the pilots are very skilled. But uh, as a captain, you have to keep in mind, like, what are the cabin crew doing? What is the ground crew doing? And okay, now the departure time is closing in and uh, we still don't have fuel. Uh, do I have to call? Uh, operations and okay the next flight is supposed to leave then and how will this affect yeah, yeah. You, you you have to like you're a manager uh, yeah yeah exactly you're a manager you have to keep all that information in the loop all the time and try to mm. just yeah. manage everything yeah. yeah yeah sounds like a great job and yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a complex but yeah. definitely yeah. Uh, rewarding Very rewarding yeah yeah mm -hmm. that's cool yeah that's, um, well, I want to be a pilot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a pilot again. You've flown basically everything. Yeah, let's go. Helicopters, yeah, planes, you've been a test pilot. I want to do it again. Still miss it. Come on. <laughs> I want to do it. We should go fly yeah, later. It's fun. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm doing tonight. It yeah. is a lot of fun. It is. It is. Yeah. yeah. No regrets. Yeah. And I mean, no with, with the job I have right now, I, I also get to see a lot of places. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. really great. The, this segment that I'm in right now. Yeah. Because the turnaround times are not just 30 minutes, you actually no. get to stay. Yeah, we actually get to stay for a couple of days yeah. in the same spot. And yeah, I've had the opportunity of uh, to go skiing on my stops and yeah. have go and buy some tea in London before I head back home. And yeah, so it's, yeah, yeah. yeah it's basically what I believe that a young pilot maybe dreams about <laughs> is to going, yeah. going to different places and being able to see, see the world. Yeah. So yeah. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, it's really nice. Big adventure. It has its yeah. perks. So. It has its perks. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I think just to wrap things up here uh, towards the end, uh, we, we spoke about a story earlier uh, on the topic of the challenges of, of, raising kids and having a family and combining that with working as a pilot and you, both you and your husband uh, are both pilots. So, yeah. so you mentioned that you were, yeah. well, you can, you can tell yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I told the story for Stein and Michelle here that uh, when uh, my husband and I were expecting our first child, uh, we were both upgraded to commanders at next it. We, we were both, with the same company and at the same aircraft type. So we were supposed to do the upgrade together. Uh, but then we realized that my medical wasn't valid during my pregnancy. Th that regulation has changed now. So, <laughs> but, <Okay>. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> uh, so we couldn't do the upgrade during my pregnancy. So we had to do it uh, right after the, the birth of our first kid. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the the upgrade the simulator was scheduled for six weeks after his birth. 
Oh, wow. So yeah, so we we went my me, my husband, uh, and my mother <laughs> <laughs> to Copenhagen to do the upgrade. So uh, yeah, so we went into the simulator and uh, did our training, and uh, my mother was babysitting, uh, was babysitting <laughs> <laughs> taking care of our kids. <laughs> During, sounds like during the a, days. It sounds like you have a fantastic <laughs> mom. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Mom. Like a whole family excursion. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It was very cool. Yeah. It's a pretty everything, cool. Ex- everything went well. He he's uh, he's well. Yeah. <laughs> no. He survived. Yeah, yeah. he survived. <laughs> That's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool to get to do the upgrade uh, with your husband as well. That must have been a, a nice experience. Yeah, it it was great. And uh, yeah. yeah, we we worked together a lot, so it's actually this past year has been quite weird for us that we were not working together mm. because uh, yeah we, we met in flight school mm. so yeah we, we started out like uh, classmates and uh, then we worked as instructors together we worked at next Jet together and uh, yeah has done all this management stuff together and it's yeah we we are really a good team so it's uh Strange, not working together. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. An aviation love story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I should write a book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's maybe I don't know, but I think it's quite common that aviators meet. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's based maybe more like cabin crew and uh, flight crew, but mm. yeah, also pilots. Yeah. I mean, you have an understanding for. Yeah. Each other. Yeah. And uh, yeah. They have the passion for the same same passion stuff. Yeah. 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 And the lifestyle as well. That's right. Understand yeah. what yeah. goes with it. Yeah. yeah. So of course it's uh, it's great to be two pilots and two aviators because yeah we we make it work. Yeah. And I mean before kids it was yeah no problem at all. Mm. It's uh, just great that we could uh, could share all yeah. this. Um, now it's a bit more of a logistical struggle. <laughs> <laughs> Adjustment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Brilliant. Uh, you're making it work. Yeah. Yeah. That's the important part. Mm. Yeah, and, and yeah, thank you for for sharing everything that we've uh, spoken about here today. It's been really interesting to hear more about your yeah. your journey, the choices you made along the way, uh, the the puzzle, the logistics that you and your husband made it work, and uh, with some help from your your mom and I'm sure other family members as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, to summarize up everything uh, towards the end here, initiative takes you a long way. Yeah. Being bold, taking some chances, and uh, like in your case, Therese, it's opened quite a few doors uh, and enabled you to work with things and discover new talents. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I, th- I think for that that perspective that you've given our listeners and us today, uh, it's it's really good because we spoke about this at lunch as well. Many people look at it becoming a pilot and then you get into a plane and then you fly. But if you have the willingness and the interest, you are the perfect example to show that there's much more to be found uh, That's right. and to yeah. get into. Absolutely. Just a line pilot. Yeah, you, you exactly. don't you don't have to be interested in airplanes to become a pilot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. All yeah. righty. But thank you so much. Thank you for being with well, us. It's um, yeah. Looking yeah. forward to meeting you again. Yeah, it's been really fun to have you on the show, Therese. Thanks for uh, coming here and uh, and being our guest today. Yeah. Thank you. It was really exciting. Mm. An experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Pleasure. Pilot talk. Everything you need to know about being a pilot. And that's a wrap for today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, don't forget to follow the Pilot Talk podcast on Instagram for behind-the-scenes material. There you can also send us your feedback, ideas, and questions. And we will have competitions from time to time where we give away free stuff. Yay. So check it out. (laughs) Yay. Yay. Uh, As always, you can find our podcast on Spotify, iTunes, Podbean, and anywhere else where podcasts can be found. And you can also tune in at osmaviation.com slash podcast if you just want to listen from your browser, for example. And uh, what do we say at the end, Michelle? Until next time. Blue skies. And happy landings. See ya. Thank you.